everyone. Welcome back. Today is Tuesday the 28th of April and time has flown between episodes. This is not a daily-ish type podcast because they kind of failed. This is episode 33. I'm just adjusting in my chair, my swivelly chair, which you can't really see. It's crushed silver velvet. I have my tea. I have my lights. I have my projects. I have spinning to show you. I have a little bit of um, sewing talk. I have some acquisitions. I have knitting. I have a shop update. I have um, February's Club Yarn to show you because I waited two months so I can show you. And there'll be a little bit of hair talk. So, we'll start with the hair. <laughs> no, we won't. My name's Ellie. <laughs> um, oh, it's been so long since I've done this. Um, I'll just get the intro out of the way and then we'll have a chit chat. So, my name's Ellie and I live in Alfington, which is in Exeter, in the southwest of England, in the UK. Um, it is three weeks check the calendar three weeks till I turn 39 now a lot of you will be going oh I didn't realize you were that young and a lot of you'll be going oh I didn't realize you were that old and some of you are like mm, okay <laughs> I'm the okay middle group um I um am an avid knitter and spinner and yarn dyer um and sewer and maker in general. I also like crochet, but I don't have any crochet to show you this week because um, having finished a few projects, I'm now waiting to, to start. What is the correct phrase for casting on a new crochet project? Some people say hook on, some people say cast on, some, I don't know. Comment down below and let me know what the correct phrase is. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so, my middle daughter Kira would like me to make her a mint coloured llama. So I have the yarn picked out. It is that one, just can you see past my shoulder? No, you can't see. In that could be helpful. Yes, just there. That's mint. Um, now the pattern itself calls for, I think it's DK or worsted weight, but I'm going to do a smaller version of fingering weight and then make her some matching socks. Um, because she loves llamas and alpacas and well yeah so that's a future project I need some tea um, yeah so it's been a while um, I had let's see how long has it actually been um, well over a month, probably nearly two months. Um, the last proper podcast I showed you was when I had released the Blue Moon Mitts. I'll show you those in a minute because they're on something I've bought. Um, pattern on Ravelry. And I haven't recorded it since, not properly. I've done my daily-ish vloggy type things. Um, you know, ranging soon sort of two in ten minutes but um, I had a bit of a self-confidence crisis and just stopped completely um, I have been feeling very much like what's the point I'm not after pity or anything else I'm just saying how I've been feeling um, you know because I'm such an introvert and you know, I'm not part of knitting groups and I find it really difficult to um, interact online. Um, now Instagram's fine, um, Facebook is fine, um, browsing is fine, I'm definitely a browser but I find it really hard to sort of jump in with conversations. I've tried and I just 
nope, it's not my comfort zone. Um, so of course I struggle to, you know, strike up new friendships or, uh, you know, get content going sort of thing. So I thought, right, um, Abby's gone to do some shopping, Neve's downstairs doing her homework. Um, so I thought I'd come on and talk. So my skin is very bad at the moment because I have uh, a psoriasis flare up. It's just stress psoriasis. You know, it's a given, everyone is stressed. But um, I redid my hair. And this is another one of the reasons that I have not recorded so long because it's taken so long to do. Now, I've uh, last time I recorded, I just dyed my hair purple with silver roots. Um, since then, it grew nearly two inches. Um, so I've got an undercut that goes sort of down on both sides, a bit like a death hawk style, but not as severe. I'm seriously contemplating going up even higher but I don't know, it depends because I have given myself dreadlocks mm -hmm. Ta-da! Dreadlocks and yes, they're at that alien stage now I started doing these, i just tuck that one back in um, I, I want to say two and a half weeks ago I did hours and hours of research and a bit of trial and error um, so some of the ones in this side tucked away need redoing and finishing more um, but most of them are done um, except for I have some fringe here or some undreaded hair here and here now I'm not sure if I'm going to dread those or give myself a proper fringe and yes I know you should never give yourself a fringe well luckily I, I you know we're in lockdown so if it goes hideously wrong the only people that are going to see it are you and people I live with. <laughs> so um, my dreads are sort of here. Um, I lost maybe two inches in length on my hair from the dread locking process. Um, I have deep blisters in my fingers. But they're really, really cute. So I have some thicker than others, which is quite deliberate. I have some, some smaller ones, and then I have some, some sort of thicker ones. And then I have these little nubbins in the back here, which are about that long. So, I have started putting extensions in. They're wrapped around the ponytail. And they're going to be these sort of colours, so purples and silvers. And I've already started working on those. Um, and putting them in probably takes about 15 minutes per dread, 20 minutes per dread. Um, it has literally taken me two weeks doing this every day to get my hair done. Um, I re-dyed, I re-bleached and dyed my hair first so that it would be more fun, I suppose. Um, I didn't dye the ends because they're going to be in the extensions. Now if you're not interested in hair stuff or dreadlocks or anything else, sorry. <laughs> now we'll get into the real stuff. But this is something that I have wanted to do in over 20 years. I first saw a lady with pretty dreadlocks when I was 16. And then I just saw lots of men having them and they, they didn't suit. And I'm not saying they do suit me, but I'm at a point in my life where I was either going to shave my hair and have really short hair, which I knew I'd regret, or put dreadlocks in. So I've done dreadlocks. I really like them. They're cute. They're pretty. I love the colour. And yes, I will be keeping on top of the colour. So yes. It's made me feel better about my appearance. Uh, in so many ways. Um, and I've decided to start stretching my ears again. Just the bottom ones. Um, because I've got lots of jewellery that I don't wear anymore. And there's some jewellery that I'd really like to get. But my ears, the gauge, is too small. Um, but that's something I go up and down. But this time I really want to get up at least to an 8, possibly a 10 mil, but just in the lobes at the bottom. And I've got more piercings and tattoos on. But 
you'll see all that over time. I realise I'm looking at that side instead of this side. It's weird. Hey. Okay, so I'm going to have another sip of, sip of tea and then I will talk about spinning. Put my cup down. So, I have got two spinning projects to show you. Finished spinning projects, washed and spun. I want to show them in the right order. Um, okay, so these are the two hand spuns that I have done. I did these last month, but didn't record. I do have another project on the wheel, but I wasn't going to carry on with that. So, I'll show you this one first. This, um, you'd seen spun, um, and you saw it, I think you saw it on the, the bobbin, but you hadn't seen it like this. So, I got a DK weight, and it worked out, of the 200 grams, I was able to spin 168 grams here, um, which gave me 616 yards. And I finished it 10th of March. So it's the Silver Sparkle Merino Nylon Two Ply. So I want to use this in a jumper, in a colour book jumper. I'm not sure what the contrast colour will be. We shall see. I have lots of options. I have lots of options. Um, but because it's DK weight, um, I actually have less options than I probably realise I do because most of my stash, I do have some DK weight yarns. I have quite a nice collection of DK weight yarns, but not sure that it will go with this unless I do my typical silver, grey, and black. I think this needs to be something really special. So if you have any pattern suggestions for jumpers, I could use this in as the main colour. 616 yards, it's a, 560 metres as the main colour. And the second one I, I have to show you is this beauty. Now this I deliberately spun quite thick. It's absolutely stunning. See, I have some really thick bits and places like here and here. And then I have some slightly thinner places. But overall, what did I work out? Most of it's about an Aran, and some bits are bulky. Um, and I got 172 yards on 121 grams. And it is a two ply. Um, now I don't normally spin two plies, so these two were definitely, I wouldn't say they're the first, because I have done two plies, but not for years. So this is Into the World and it's Butterfly Effect. Uh, it's superwash merino, no, you know, other ingredients. And it was the October 2014 Club Fiber. Um, I spun this and finished it on the 17th of March and then I washed it and measured it and things like that. So I have started using washi tape as, as tags. Um, I just started doing it. I don't know why the thought never occurred to me before but I literally um, fold it in half over one strand and write what I need to on there. It doesn't come off. I know it's a simple thing, but it made me feel pretty, not pretty, but really good. Um, pretty clever, that's what I was going to say. So, this one is probably going to be a hat or a cowl, but it won't be for me because it's not really my colours, but it is absolutely stunning. Oranges and blues and browns. But it does have these beautiful sections, like here, you can focus, where it's a lot darker and muted and sort of here. And I love those sections. So yeah, those are my two sewing pro spinning projects. I'm so out of practice, guys. <laughs> um, I spun on my Kiwi 2, um, which currently lives in the kitchen. Um, yeah, not that, you know, it's a small kitchen or anything, it's, it's got its own place. So, another sip of tea. I've got the windows closed today um, because it's raining, so any cars that go past are really loud. 
and yeah, it's wet, it's grey, but it's okay. I have bright lights. I'm very shiny. I'm noting I'm very shiny, but that's just because of the, the lotion I have to use. So, moving on to knitting. <laughs> okay, so, I have mostly just been working on a couple of projects since I've seen you guys. Um, both of which jumpers. I have kind of dipped into a few other projects, but it's all stuff that I've been designing and I'm not ready to show you. Yes, I know. I didn't put out the... Um, Full pink moon mitts in time. Not finished. So, this is the yarn bowl I'm using. And I keep my yarn bowl in my project bags. Just to make it easier for, for yarn management. So, I am working on the Witching Hour Swan Cho by Dear Ingenue really really pretty if I move up a picture it'll focus better and I started this two months ago not as long as that ago I don't think so I am using sublime lustrous extra fine merino DK in shade 291 which is pink and I'm using Adrafil Carezza, Adrafil Angora Carezza, in the colour 1. Now this is an Aran, and this is DK. But it has worked beautifully. So, this project bag was a, a, a gift for my friend. I love it. She doesn't make bags anymore. Um, this is called Lucy, and Lucy is a nurse, so super. Right, now, it has grown low since I last showed you. So, that is the colour work, and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You can see a couple of pink dots here. Those, I'm hoping, will just block out. It's from where the floats have slipped through. But I absolutely love it. And... I have done sleeve one and I am on the ribbing for sleeve two I've got three and a half inches left on that sleeve now I did the sleeves because it's a swan show so it finishes the, the yoke finishes elbow length here but I didn't know how long I wanted to make it so I'm trying to finagle it so you can see I'll just hold it up the other way um, this is the bottom of the yoke and then you're supposed to do six inches and then you've got some ribbing some detailing at the bottom there mm. now I decided that I would just throw all my pink yarn into it and make it as long as I could um, so where's my marker here is my marker to measure six inches. Now, I'm nearly there. I've got another inch to go before I do the bottom detail. But I want it longer, like I said. So I have still got um, three whole balls left for the body because the sleeves each take one ball minus this much so it's not the sleeves don't take a lot they are small balls but each one of these balls will only knit they are what are they in yardage 95 meters and they knit no when did I see end to end they knit they knit approximately two inches in body so I have this ball um, for the sleeves. So I just have the three. So when I um, 
I will probably only do one more ball of pink because I have it in here somewhere. No, nope. I'm actually at the point where I need to attach a new ball of wool. So I should do one more ball of wool of the pink. Then I should put in the detailing and the, the ribbing. So this is not going to be as long as I wanted it to be. But it will still be very wearable. And I absolutely love, 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 love this yoke. Oh, I would stand up and show you, but that will be noisy. So this will get finished very quickly. Um, I've been working on it. It's just, oh, I can't get over how pretty that looks on camera. I mean, it's beautiful in real life, but it's, it's showing so nicely. Um, yeah, oh, it's going to be gorgeous. So beautiful, in fact, that I'm going to be trying to make a cardigan version. And I figured out how to do the chart so that it's just an open cardigan. Um, the only thing that I struggled with was doing it for the sleeves. Because I don't want... Come back and focus. Hello. Thank you. I don't want to have that yoke depth on a cardigan. Um, yes, it would be comfortable, but I want it to be more raglan shaped. Um, so when I cast that one on, it will be going top down, the same as this is, but I will share the modifications without giving away secret sauce of you know, the designer um, and her charts and things. I will share my modifications, how I've turned it from a, a long yoke into a cardigan. So yes. It's lovely and I'm thoroughly enjoying it and it's going to be so soft and I can't wait to block it and wear it. So, I'll pop that away. Needle-wise, I'm going as per the pattern. Um because I, I got gauge. Um, sometimes I'm a tighter knitter, sometimes I'm a loose knitter, but generally when I'm knitting larger pieces, um, I don't need to go up or down needle size and things like that because I don't really tension my yarn unless I have to. I literally just hold the yarn and knit with it. I don't do any finger wrapping or anything else. At the very, the most I will do is as I'm knitting, I'll put the yarn through here and over my ring finger and just let it glide that way and that's simply to hold it away from the needles. Um, I wasn't taught tension yarn um, when I was little. It, it was assumed that at you know, six and eight years old it wouldn't be something that I'd ever continue with but I did. So the other project I have been working on mostly is my this is gonna rustle my sorrel jumper here it is so this is by wool and pine who are dank fiber and abbey knits um and i'm loving this jumper i have taken some creative license with the the color i did do the uh, fade um but I have done my own version of a fade. So it is inside out because I'm still working on the body. So I'm going to very carefully turn it the right way out so you can see it so far. Because I have done the sleeves and I'm literally on the bottom of the body. I have got an inch before the ribbing to go. On. but I'm working on a very small needle a very very small needle so turning it there we go I managed and I didn't drop that stitch yes <laughs> okay so I'll lift this up carefully if I drop stitches now well never mind okay so this is my sorrel so I started I'm holding, or I have been holding, uh, you can see an end here, um, a silver lace weight yarn with decay, uh, fingering weight yarns. 
instead of mohair because I have this one in my hair. This is my, I can't remember what it's called, uh, Petite Knits Jumper, everyone's knit one. Um, it's a bit of mohair. No, nope, it's gone. So, moving on. Um, I didn't want to knit um, another mohair jumper. I wanted, because I still had this one on the needles at the time that I started this one. So I wanted it to just be fingering weight and lace. So with this one I did some, I did the silver with one colour to here, and then I did another colour to here, and another colour to here, and then it just went into the black. So if I come closer, you can see the black goes into the sort of purpley colour, and then a bluey colour, and then the silver colour. So I decided that I was going to reflect it in the sleeves as well. So the sleeves are both finished as one. And here's the other one. Oh, it's still tucked inside this outfit. I haven't woven in any ends because it's not finished. Ta -da. So you can see, oh, you can actually see on the sleeve. Okay, so uh, the sleeve is black and silver to here. And then it is the purple. Weird, the closer I get you, you can't see it. I've got this beautiful purple and then the blues and then the silver and then on the body it's just all all black and silver but I have now changed to the darker color lace yarn and there's a bit of a step you can see here um, you can see there's a definite stripe of change but I actually really like that and I've only got an inch left and then I will be doing the ribbing on the bottom and it's been such a lovely project to do I have absolutely loved this yoke I think it's absolutely stunning I would quite happily do it all over a whole project a whole jumper um, if someone else wrote a pattern like it you know obviously or if wool and pine do a a full length version with these sort of pine feathery things on. Um, I cannot wait to finish this and wear it. Um, this has become my evening knitting um, and it's it's zooming quite fast so I have got maybe yeah about an inch left before I do the ribbing. Now I deliberately am doing the long version not the cropped version because this one is a cropped version and I don't wear it as much as I would, you know, as I want to, because I know that it doesn't, it, it sits in the wrong place. Um, it's cosy. No frills sweater. That's what this one's called. Um, but yes. So this one I have done longer. The sleeves are long. Um, I I modelled the measurements on this one against my so faded um, jumper by. Drear and ain't it. Um, but one mod I did do with the sleeves, I didn't do the decreases as it says in the pattern. I did long, just a long tube, and then I did some rapid decreasing in the silver section here. And I've still got a bigger circumference at the wrist um, than it called for, but I'm okay with that because it means it'll be loose and comfy. Anything else I want to say? Yeah, so the yarns I've used. The black is my Curio yarns in Poison. Um, the silver lace weight is. I think it's Five Moons. Uh, the purple and the blue are Miss Babs, and the silver is Vine, one of her very first ones. I can't remember if it's Poe or Moon or Moon Pearl or something like that. But it's it's an old one, Deep Stash. So yes. I have really tickly known. Oh, Abby's just got home with her shopping. And so now I'm going to be really self conscious about recording in front of you. <laughs> in front of her. Um She's going to think I've finished if I wave out the window. So I'm going to pretend I haven't seen her. No, I'm not. I shall wave out the window. Um, 
So, don't worry about me touching my face. I have washed my hands. I'm perfectly clean. I don't have coronavirus. I'm not going to cure it to myself. Another sip of tea. Okay. So, sewing. Oh, DHL that. You can see here behind me, my mannequin. I started making this Nina Lee Q dress. If I put it there, you can see it better. There we go. And I was using linen and lace. And I was making the size I would always make. However, I don't know if you can tell, I have gained weight. <laughs> and nothing to do with coronavirus. It's just because as my health has improved, I've been able to eat different things. Y yeah. <laughs> so, since Christmas, I have gained nearly a stone. So that's £14. Doesn't fit. So I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, I really have no idea. It's a beautiful dress. I don't know if I could put in some extra bits. I don't know. I don't have enough of the fabric to redo it. And I spent a long time doing it beautifully. I might just make it just to finish it. We'll see. But, um, when I was in Sainsbury's a couple of weeks ago, um, I couldn't resist just going and having a look at the magazines. I wasn't expecting to buy any, but I did. I bought the Simply Sewing magazine, which is by Immediate Media, because it was a bumper. It came... It was the main magazine. It had an older copy of Birda Easy with it. And it had three sewing patterns that I really want to make. And it's the first time that I bought a magazine and I've wanted to make all the patterns. So, the first is the Vivian, the Vivian dress, which is this. This is the version I want to make, the sleeveless one. And I do have fabric that will work. So I'm really pleased. Light. So this one starts at a UK size 6 and it goes up to a UK size 20. Now it says that for dress A, which is the one I want to make, you need 2.2 metres. I have enough fabric for that. I really do. Um, it's very simple construction. It's exactly the sort of shaping and everything that I like. It has the darts going the correct way on the bust that I like. Um... You need, it says you need the fabric, you need um, an invisible zip, matching thread, and a basic sewing sheet, basic sewing kit. Yes, please. So, I will be making this. And I have managed to sort out my time now with the whole, everyone being in the same house, because Abby's not at work, she's had to close the shop. Being a tattoo artist, it's too close, she can't do it. So I have managed to carve out some time that I can start sewing again. So I have some fabrics over there that I can use. It's either going to be my uh, back fabric, so it's sort of, I won't say taupe, but it's a bit more caramelly than that, with black mini bats, or it's going to be my black fabric which has the gold moons on it. But I really want to start that this week. The second one it, that came is the Breton top. Now this is my everyday staple wardrobe, just not stripy. I have lots of these t-shirts. Long sleeve scoop neck t-shirts are my go-to t-shirts. Um, but with this one, I will be able to make it fit me properly. You know, it won't be too tight in places and too loose in others because you know they're shop and they're straight. Um, I have stretch fabric. I have some knitted fabric, um, but I do need more fabric. And then the third one is the staple cami, which is by Measure Twice Cut Once. Now she's an Australian lady. Um, the other two are just the magazine, but this one is in conjunction with her. So she's Susan Goodwin, Measure Twice founder. 
um, and then it's got her pattern website on the back but it, for this one you need um, 1.9 meters uh, it's got two different yardages here it says main fabric 1.1 meters Oh, so you need 1.1 meters if it's 45 inches wide, but you only need 65 centimeters if it's 55 inches wide. Well, heck, I'm going to be making loads of these because I also like vests. The only thing I will change potentially is the band across the bottom. Um, you can see it more in the detailing here. Now, I know that's meant to stabilize the fabric, but I will just be putting a simple hem on that. So I have patterns now for tops I like. Um, this one is a straight up and down, but if I need to, I can alter it very simply for my shape. So I'm really excited. And the magazine itself is really good, really good. Now in the Birder Easy one that came with it, there are a few patterns, but I'm not enamored with any of them, like none of them which is a shame. Um, so they've got these patterns, those ones, and there's these ones. Mm -hmm. I may have a go at the trousers, I don't know. I do have a good trouser pattern already. So that's it for sewing stuff. Now we're on to, should we do acquisitions next, or do we do shop stuff? I'm going to do acquisitions. So, wonderful piece, just wonderful. I have been wanting sock blockers and mitten blockers for a while to show things on the podcast without them being all crinkly and everything else. Now, I used to use some plasticky ones, but they've just died a, a, a death. No. So, I found a lady on Etsy who um, has the uh, Mylan Jedro Etsy. She, yeah, Mylan Jedro. Um, she's called Anna. There we go. And she was doing a sock blocker set with mittens. And I took a chance and I messaged her to say I'm not 100% keen on those ones can I swap in these ones but at that deal and she was straight away was like yes that's no problem I was like fantastic so um, the mitten blockers I've just dropped the thumb beneath me but the thumb is plain so I got some spiders if I did that you'll see better and they have the thumb come with them so these are my blue moon mitts and so they are absolutely perfect. Now I got the small because I actually have, apparently I have small hands. I don't have big hands. I have big knuckles, but I don't have big hands. And so you get this piece and then the thumb just go in the milk. I'm really happy with those. And the others I got in the set were also the spiders. So with these, I, ha I got the medium foot because apparently according to sock blockers I needed a medium but the medium's actually a bit big now I know that you know you measure your feet etc um, now I followed all the guidelines on how to choose the correct size however I also know that sock blockers are intended to make the socks a bit bigger but I didn't realize how much bigger now this is a sock that you've seen on the podcast before I nearly finished the second one. I put it on and it's really tight and the heel should be here. They are just, they're, they're too big for my socks. So I'm quite happy to just use them and show you, but I, I mean, I, I wasn't going to be using them for wet blocking, they're just for show and to look pretty because they're, they're, they're pretty. Because spiders and wool, the spider has made a wool wet. Mm. So I've got the medium in these. They are beautifully made. 
the socks go on really easily, they come off really easily. So I just thought I'd show you one of my socks on a sock. Because I can, because I now have them. Fantastic customer service. Um, custom made, um, or made to order. So I have, oh. So yeah. So now I can put those away, because they've been waiting for me to show you since they arrived and they took a couple of weeks. They arrived a month ago. Yes. So, <clears throat> before I go into what's going in the shop update this Friday, I will show you Jan uh, February's colour for the Witchy Yarn Club that I have. So, um, every month I dye a new colourway for the Witchy Yarn Club. So February's, I'm showing you now because everyone, everyone's got them. So February was Yennefer de Wengerberg. And these are my ones because it was so beautiful. Ta -da. So it's mostly black and then it's got sort of turquoisey teal and purples. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it just pretty? So this is Yennefer. Now, these three are mine purely because I accidentally ordered a couple of bags of the wrong yarn. I must have not been having a good day. But I picked the, young, the wrong merino yarn. So this one is a higher twist and it's a lot shorter. And I didn't feel comfortable selling it for the same price or selling it at all because it's not what I would normally dye on. So these three are going to be for jumper for me. Now, what jumper should I make? Hmm? They're very pretty. Let me know what pattern you'd, you'd make. So that was February. <laughs> now the first three months are done. Um, so the first, there were three or six months of those done. Um, so I've still got months four, five, and six for the other customers who who bought the six month subscription. If you would like in on months four, five, and six, those will be open again uh, on Friday as well. I'll put up the listing for you know months four, five, and six. So because I know that some of the people who bought three months wanted to buy the six months but couldn't so could they do it in two halves I was like yes that's fine so if you want to jump in on that do so I was going to show you month two which is just behind the camera which was Geralt but I can't because one lady didn't receive hers so I sent out a replacement with this month so I will show you that next week because she's only local she, she, she'll probably get it tomorrow yeah um, there's just so much going on with Royal Mail at the moment, so much is being lost, so much is not, you know, some, some stuff's taking forever, some stops the next day, we just have to be really patient. So, I just dropped a skin. I had been having some fun in the dive pots, other than the club yards. I'm going to reach down and get this one, because I want to show you. Um, so after I died, no, yeah, after I died last month's girl, I had a play in the dye pots, and I was, mm, are these me? And I was like, why not? You know. So, I dyed up a really, really fun, fun colour. So these are actually, if I can show you on camera, they have a very pale, pinkish wash for the base. And then I just went crazy with um, pinks and purple, blue, green, yellow. They are proper birthday cake sprinkle type. Mm, so pretty. So I did three of each of these colours as a, a fun thing to do. So these will be going up. 
and then the next one I did um, was this beauty. It's looking a bit blown out actually, see if I can get close to it. It's a bit better. So this is a sort of tealy aquary colour, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then I speckled it because I really like speckles. So this one has got, oh that's really not good light. I can't show you this but well, it's got a sort of cadmium blue, indigo blue and pink speckles on it. Can't get the light right. It's it's okay, as you can see. So it's not heavily speckled, but there are definite groups of speckles, as you can see. So those three will be going up as well. And then the, uh, the last three that will be going up are these three. I have one of my hairs on there. That's really peculiar seeing one of my hairs now that's like this on a yarn. So these are a lot heavier speckled. This is similar to the yarn I'm this I'm wearing, but it's it is different. It's different greys. And it's this one's very lightly speckled with pink. This one's heavily speckled. So it's pink and blue and grey and oh so pretty. So so pretty. So there are three of these as well. Now they're all on um merino nylon fingering weight. They're all 400 meters per skein and they will all be there on Friday too. So I've not done a lot because in the current climate I haven't got the money to replace yarn if it's not selling. So I'm only doing small updates. Um, yeah, that's why. There are no project bags going in this week, no new project bags because I haven't sewn any new ones. There are plenty up there. Um, and there are still plenty of yarns and there are lots of fibre. But I have now finished moving everything from Etsy to CurioYarns.com. So yeah, it's very exciting. Um, it is sort of having a facelift at the moment. I'm still working on the website itself. There's nothing that will stop you buying yarn. It all still looks beautiful. I'm just sort of tweaking bits here and there so that it's more fun, I suppose. Um, yeah. So, anything else? I don't know. The shop update is Friday at 6, this Friday, which will be, let me just have a look on the calendar, because I'm not dates. 1st of May. So May the 1st at 6pm on curioyarns.com. That's it. The colour along is still going. Um, so go and have a look in the Ravelry thread, join in there on Instagram, etc. If you like, please subscribe and like down below. Still feels corny saying it, even after all these years. Um, that would be great. Share the video. Tell people about me. You know. Share the love. Come and join the Ravelry group. Curio Yarns. Um, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, everywhere is Curio Yarns. Um, for yarny stuff. I do have a personal Instagram account, so if we're friends, you'll know where to find me. So that is it. I will uh, go and have some lunch and then edit the video and put it up. See you all soon. Bye.